So here we will examine the connective tissues. As their name implies, the connective tissues function to connect, bind, and support all of the other tissue types. Some connective tissues, such as bone, will function in protection, while others like adipose tissue will protect as well as insulate. Some connective tissues will also function in a storage capacity. That is, they will store nutrients or minerals that can be used by the body when they are needed. In connective tissues, we see that there's a wide range of vascularization. Some connective tissues, such as the bones and the fibrous connective tissues, tend to be very well vascularized and have lots of little capillaries and blood vessels. On the other hand, things like the cartilages are avascular, so it is, they lack blood vessels entirely. So we're going to see that the connective tissues are incredibly diverse in both their structure and their function. Much of that diversity is due to the composition of the extracellular matrix, which is a protein or fibrous material along with a gel-like fluid that exists between the cells of the connective tissue. The extracellular matrix can be soft and flexible, or it can be hard and rigid. Mesenchyme is an embryonic connective tissue that gives rise to all of the connective tissues that we see in the human body. This means that all of the connective tissues have a common embryonic origin. So we begin our overview of the connective tissues by examining the major types of connective tissues. And these types are the fibrous connective tissues, which all contain protein fibers in their extracellular matrix. There are six varieties of the fibrous connective tissues. We also have the cartilages, which also contain protein fibers in their extracellular matrix. There are three types of cartilage. We also see bone and finally blood. So let's begin with the fibrous connective tissues. And we can further subdivide the fibrous connective tissues into the loose fibrous connective tissues, in which there are three types here, and the dense fibrous connective tissues, also in which there are three types. So this gives us our six types of uh, fibrous connective tissues in total. The terms loose and dense here refer to how tightly the fibers are packed together. So as you might expect, the loose fibrous connective tissues have protein fibers that are fairly loosely arranged, while the dense fibrous connective tissues tend to have more tightly packed protein fibers. So let's start with the loose fibrous connective tissues. So areolar connective tissue is the most widely distributed of the connective tissues in the body. It is found underneath most epithelial tissues. It surrounds many organs, as well as forms a delicate wrapping around capillaries. So areolar connective tissue functions uh, to support and nourish epithelial tissues uh, because it is found directly underneath most of the epithelial tissues of the body. And it functions to nourish those because areolar connective tissue contains a lot of small capillaries. And so those small capillaries are brought in close proximity to these epithelial tissues and nutrients and oxygen can diffuse from those capillaries to the epithelial tissues. And around the other organs that areolar connective tissue is associated with, we see that it forms a protective layer. Next we have reticular connective tissue, and this tissue is typically associated with the organs of the lymphatic system. And as such, it's found with the or found within the spleen, the lymph nodes, and the bone marrow. Reticular connective tissue functions as a protein fiber framework for the soft and delicate lymphatic system organs. And finally, the last of the loose connective tissues is adipose tissue. The large bubble-like cells that we see in adipose tissue are packed with lipids called triglycerides. Adipose tissue is primarily located underneath the skin that is, it's situated between the skin and the skeletal muscles. We also see that it's a major component of breast tissue, and it's also found in the abdomen. And finally, it surrounds delicate organs, such as the kidneys and the eyes. So adipose tissue around the kidneys and the eyes functions in physical protection of those structures. Underneath the skin, adipose tissue 
functions as a body heat insulator because the lipids that it contains are a good insulator of heat. In general, the triglycerides that are located within adipose tissue serve as a fuel reserve, so they can be metabolized in order to make ATP energy, specifically when we are resting or when we are sleeping. So now we will examine the three types of dense fibrous connective tissues. And remember that these are dense fib fibrous tissues because their protein fibers that are in their extracellular matrix are very uh, tightly packed together. So the first is dense regular connective tissue, which is a tissue that's primarily found in things like tendons and ligaments. The dense regular connective tissue is primarily composed of a protein referred to as collagen. The collagen fibers are generally arranged parallel to one another, so hence the name regular, as this implies that the fibers are all oriented in the same direction. These parallel fibers are good for resisting tension and also resisting stretch in the direction that the fibers are arranged. And so for this reason, dense, regular connective tissues behave much like ropes in a biological capacity. So that is, ropes will transmit pulling forces without stretching. We see that ligaments bind bones to other bones, while tendons function to transmit the pulling forces of muscles to the skeleton so that the muscles can move the skeleton when the muscles contract. So ne next we have dense elastic connective tissue, and this tissue is present in the large elastic arteries, such as the aorta. The elastic arteries are the arteries that are in closest proximity to the heart, and these are the arteries that receive blood after the blood is pumped out of the heart. So dense elastic connective tissue is composed of a protein called elastin, which has a greater ability to stretch than collagen does. And due to its ability to stretch and recoil, dense elastic tissue essentially behaves as a rubber band. Elastic arteries will stretch when the heart pumps, and their stretched out walls will continue to keep the blood under pressure even between heartbeats. And when the heart starts to relax, the elastic arteries will recoil and push blood away from the heart. So therefore, they are essentially supplementing the pumping action of the heart muscle. And finally, we have dense irregular connective tissue. And the tissue composes the majority of the uh, layer in the skin that's called the dermis. And it's also found around the capsules of the synovial joints, which are most of the joints that unite the, the bones in our skeleton. And it also forms the tough fibrous coverings around the kidneys, the bones, cartilages, skeletal muscles, and nerves. And so these are just some examples of dense irregular connective tissue in the body. So on the left, dense irregular connective tissue is found within a structure called the periosteum, which is a tough connective tissue sheet that wraps around the superficial surface of the body's bones. And so one of its purposes there is to provide an anchoring point for tendons and ligaments. It also provides an anchoring point for blood vessels and nerves. On the right is an image showing the cell layers of the epidermis, that is the magenta colored cells that are on the top, and then underneath that, the dermis. Dense irregular connective tissue forms the bulk of the tissue that we see in the dermis. The collagen fibers that are found within dense irregular connective tissue are arranged in many different directions, so hence the name irregular. And this gives the tissue resistance to stretch and tearing in any direction. And so therefore, it's an ideal tissue for reinforcing other tissues, such as the tissues found in the skin and around the bones, and at the same time providing a support or anchoring site.